what's up, everyone? Welcome to the FFL 360 team call. Again, phenomenal week. Last week was a record week. Uh, we had 28, 28 writers um, go out there, serve families. We served over 110 families for a record-breaking $150,000 of business in one week. So great work, everyone. Um, and today, what we're going to do is we're going to go through how to book 30 appointments a week and get your business on autopilot. Because I know we were just talking about it, but once you get up to like that 30 appointment mark range, um, you just you just don't care anymore what happened. You don't care if you get a no-show. You don't care if you get forged. You don't care you know, if someone's a jerk to you at the door. You can, you can leave homes and you don't have, you don't have that commission breath. Um, so you know that you have a lot of other families that genuinely need your help. And if you're running 30 appointments a week, for anyone that has kids on here, y'all could literally send your kids or your dog out there you know, just with a little folder on top of their head and pick up some checks and IDs from folks to get them protected. But some people just genuinely need the help. Um, so what we're going to go over today, again, is how to book 30 appointments. And we're going to go through about five different topics that we're going to discuss today. The first four, one of them is actually just preparing for the phones, you know, what to do on dial day, making sure we're well prepared. Um, and then the second one will be about our tonality and speed, like how to actually sound on the phone is a lot of the times what, how we say something is actually more important than what we're actually saying. Um, the third thing we'll go over is the script making sure that we have a solid script down. The fourth is gonna be objections, going over any objections that we can get, how to overcome objections. And then the fifth thing is gonna be about activity, the actual pace, how we um, should be dialing and what we can actually do um, to maximize how many phone calls we are making um, during our dial day. It, well, it's really important, we'll, we'll hit at the end. So I got ADD, I gotta stay on track. Um, but let me go ahead and share my screen real quick. So the first thing is going to be about actually preparing for the phones. So if you guys actually could, and let's see if I can make this work. Um, how do I show the chat box here? There we go. So if you guys can start dropping in the comment box, please. Um, anything that you think that we need to make sure that we are well prepared for the phones, please go ahead and start dropping them in the comment box right now. Please be interactive or this is going to get awkward. Sweet. Okay. Phone <laughs> bar. I love it, dude. So we got phone leads um, and Revercom. I saw you said leads. Um, going over the leads real quick, if you can, or if you can just drop again in the box, how many leads do you think that you need on a dial day um, to actually make sure we have a productive dial day? Sweet. I love it, dude. So Chris said 50 plus. Um, so I'm going to challenge that a little bit. And I'm going to say we need about 75 leads. And these leads don't need to be, they, they need to be new leads. They don't have to be like brand new leads, like an instant internet lead or a mailer, but they got to be leads that are new to you, like leads that you haven't dialed yet. Um, once we get a consistent lead flow going, it just, it just becomes a lot simpler. And this business really gets on autopilot. Um, so we got phone. Leads, two great things. Anything else um, that you guys got to make sure we have? Ooh, Zach, I love it, dude. hundred plus. That's definitely where I would I would shoot for is having about hundred plus leads to dial. Because um, if you're getting hundred plus of the one month leads, you are going to need over. Or if you're dying all, sorry, if you're using a lot of the one month leads, like you will get a lot of objections there. But you do want to make sure you're getting at least a hundred of them. You know, if you get hundred of the one month leads or three month leads, it's going to cost between like three four hundred bucks. That ain't bad at all to go set 10 appointments out of that and, and see a return. Um, so we got phone tracker. And then I, I saw Chris also said a, a quiet place. So we need a phone tracker. We'll also put our scripts, scripts out and a list of any objections that you have. Um, and then a quiet place slash office, no distractions. Um, I remember when I first started, I'm not well known for keeping my spot very tidy with like laundry and and dishes and whatnot, but for whatever reason on dial day, when I was working from my house, I would always do the dishes. My spot was spotless on dial day and it took away from a lot of the productivity um, that I was having. Um, anything else here that you guys can think of off the top of your head? Dial goals, sweet. And so you dial, dial goals and schedule. I like that a lot, Zach, good stuff. Um, so schedule and goals. Um, so also going back real quick to the leads, 
I'm going to add another one on here and I'll share this recording for you guys as well. But if you want, please do take some notes on here as well. Um, with the leads, we want to make sure that they're organized. Now you don't want to be dialing in the morning. You haven't organized your leads yet. You're, you're getting a late start to the day. Um, so I know, you know, some people on here have little kids. I mean, most of y'all, if I asked a question, if I said, Hey, how many of y'all put your kids clothes out the night before? A lot of you guys would probably raise your hand and say, yes, we do that. Why? You know, because it's just so much easier to get them to school in the morning, get them to daycare. The same thing's true over here. We want to make sure that we're well prepared for dial day and have the leads organized. Um, for example, I run, we don't want to go analysis paralysis, but we do want to organize them by general area. Um, so what I do for my dial day, I run uh, Jacksonville, which is a massive county, uh, Duval County. It's a massive county. It can take over an hour to get from one side of the county to the other. And I know a lot of you guys also travel in congested areas such as Los Angeles, Atlanta, where there is a decent bit of traffic that we need to account for. Um, so what I do with the Jacksonville leads, I just organize them and I put them in stacks. So like, when I print them all, I print out all my leads. I'm just old school. But I like to throw, like, I like to crumple it up and, you know, someone's a jerk to me on the phone and, I just, I want to get rid of that lead. I crumple it up, throw it in the trash can, yell Kobe, and I'm, I'm through with it. It, just, it feels good to crumple it up. But anyway, having them organized, I put them in piles of north, south, east, east, sorry, east and west, and center. So that way, and then I just put them all on top of each other. So when I'm dialing through the leads, my schedule should stay pretty consistent, right? Because we're the doctor. They're the patient. They're fitting into our schedule. We're not, fill, we're not fitting into theirs. So by organizing the leads, if it takes you an extra 30 minutes the night before or waking up an extra 30 minutes early to, um, to actually organize the leads, it's going to save you a boatload of driving time. So if any of you guys are having an issue with driving time, like going an hour, hour and a half on average between appointments, getting your leads organized is actually going to help a pretty solid bit, um, bit with that. And going back to the... Do, 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 um, going back to the chat box real quick for any other stuff that we got to do on phone prep. Um, Relic, that is actually very important. So what Relic said is going into dial day with a positive mindset. Terrence um, also to do saying, saying positive affirmations. Um, so yeah, let's go through those real quick. Um, mindset. Mindset affirmation. So this is actually very important. Um, I, was, I was talking to one of our agents, who, you know, he was struggling a little bit. And I'd be like, what's going on? He goes, I'm not doing my morning routine. I'm not getting out of bed and just doing something active as well. So, um, um, so just actually getting up in the morning a little bit earlier, just getting outside, getting some, even if it's just a 10, 15 minute walk outside on a treadmill, push up, sit ups, whatever it is, it just, you're winning the first battle of the day and you go into dial day with a much better mindset. Because however you feel during that day, I know it's, sounds weird, but your energy is getting brought over to the client. So your clients and your leads can actually sense your energy. So when you have a positive, you know, when you exercise in the morning, have a positive mindset and say, <coughs> excuse me, say positive affirmations, you go into dial day with just a much better attitude to actually go out there and serve a lot of folks. So I'll see if there's anything else that we have in the chat box here, and then we'll go on to the next topic. Why is my chat box not showing up? What the heck's going on here? Sorry. There we go. Positive affirmations. Perfect. Yep. And then oh, one other thing, uh, Mike Van Riper did say something actually very important um, about getting leads and when to dial them. Um, so I always like, so we should be dialing by 7.30. The true question here is the day before. So if you're not working on Sundays and you take two hours out of your Sunday to dial, which is a great day to dial because everyone's home and in great moods. A lot of folks are back from church, you know, about their families, telemarketers aren't hitting them up on dial days. Um, this Sunday is a great day to dial. If you go into your Monday and you already have two, three, four appointments on the books, that helps a lot with your mindset for the rest of Monday, knowing that you already have some families to go out there and help. So, that's perfect. Um, I'll just check one more time to see if there was anything else that I missed in the chat box. Why does it keep disappearing on me? Okay, sorry. Give me one second here. Perfect. Awesome. Perfect. So that's what we do here. 
And then one thing about phone prep, just make sure you do also have a Google Voice or sideline number downloaded, or if you're using phone burner, make sure you have that ready to go. Um, for folks that are new here, Google Voice and Sideline are great numbers to dial from. It's kind of like having a second phone number. Um, so it's, one, it's just it's good to separate business life from personal life, right? Um, but I will always dial from a local number. So I work. I'm from Jersey. I'm in Jacksonville. If I on a lot of people in Jacksonville with the Jersey number, they're going to think I'm a scammer. Even if it's from the other side of Florida, they're like, why is someone from Tampa calling me here in Jacksonville? So I will always call from a, either a Google Voice number or Sideline. Google Voice is free. You can get one free number with that. Sideline is about 10, 15 a month, and you can actually change your number up to once a day. So I love Sideline, especially if you guys are working in a lot of different areas. Sideline is great to have for that. And for phone burner, if you guys are using the internet leads, phone burner is a source that you can put all of your leads into. Um, it's like an automatic, or it's, a, it's, a, it's a dialer system that just burns through the leads for you and helps pick up the pace of your dialing. So moving on from that, um, we're gonna touch on um, tonality and speed. And this one's gonna be pretty short here. Um, I used to, when I first started, actually, sorry, I wanna add one more thing on here. Um, training. So when I first started out, and what helped me a whole lot is every morning um, on dial days, I listened to two trainings. One of them was from Dominique Rogers, um, he's at FFL Golden State and Eric Schmidt. Sorry, Eric, if I misspelled your name and, and Zach Twardowski. Um, these were some awesome trainings that I listen to every day. So Dom Rogers actually talks a lot about tonality and speed. And Eric Schmidt, now this with Zach Twardowski, it's a phenomenal training. They go over the actual phone script and some in-home stuff as well. So I listened to those two. And honestly, those two only every single morning for about four months in a row. Um, so it was me as a new insurance agent, you know, going from data analyst to, to insurance, I had not a clue how to talk to people. Um, and I was like, I'm brand new at this. So if I try recreating the wheel with my stuff, it might not do well. But if I just listen to these nonstop, I got these objections on the phones and I sound like Dom Rogers or I sound like Eric Schmidt or Zach Twardowski. All right, it's going to work. Um, another great person on the phone for y'all to listen to is Matt Smith. He has a great training over phone. It's a great product for Google. And one of the great things about Google Voice is it'll... Oh, sorry. Um, so I would make sure you do start going over those. Those are very, very uh, important trainings to go over. Let me just get the chat box open to see if I'm missing anything. Nope, sweet. Okay, so tonality, this um, tonality and speed, um, Eric Schmidt in his training had a great line on this and you want to talk fast enough, I'm oh, sorry. Uh, oh, sorry, so they can. So I'm gonna almost look at this for in terms of tonality and speed, you wanna talk slow enough so they can completely understand you, but fast enough so they cannot interrupt you. Um, so I'm from Jersey, I typically just talk really fast and I, I thought I was slowing it down, I, I moved to South Carolina, um, but I was getting a lot of, what did you say? What is this about? And I once I started recording myself and listening to myself live, I realized that I was talking way too fast and if I could barely understand what I was saying, the client on the other end of the line would not understand what I was saying either. Um, so we got that and then match tonality. This is also very, very important right here. Oh, I'm gonna stick with selling insurance, not the English language because I'm not a great speller. Tonality, there we go. So matching tonality. So like for example, if you have Miss Mary on the line and she's a very soft spoken, you know, older lady, 80 years young, and like Chris, if you start talking to her like, hey, Mary, this is Chris, just getting back to you. You're going to scare the crap out of her. But then, you know, if you also got someone like Chris, who's like more like a lumberjack, you know, a man, and you're like, hey, Chris, this is Dan. I'm just kidding. They're going to walk all over you. So you want to match the tonality of the client on the line. So if you guys ever listen to any like Easton Patton trainings, I listen to him live. He does a great <laughs> Sorry, if you guys can just make sure you guys are muted on here. Um, and uh, John, yes, this will be uh, recorded as well. I will put it into the um, 
uh, the FFL YouTube, the FFL 360 YouTube page. Um, so just give me like a, a few days or so, and it'll be up there, and I'll share it in our Slack group as well. Um, but in terms of speed and tonality, it's pretty simple. The your tonality, you want to match the tonality of the client on the other end of the line. And in terms of speed, you want to talk fast enough so that um, they can't interrupt you, but slow enough so they can confidently understand you. Um, and then in regards to script, we'll actually go into the, the phone script. So when I first started, um, even when I would like do speeches back in like, high school or college or whatever it was, I like, just getting up in front of a room and do like a presentation. Um, I would always worry about everything that I was saying. And as soon as I just realized that there's only a few points I really need to hit on in my speech or whatever topic I was talking about, I didn't like when I was going through the script, like I didn't, if I missed something, I'm not like, Oh God, what do I do? And freeze up. And I know that probably happens to a few of y'all too. So I just keep the script super, super simple. And I keep it in three parts. The first one is the introduction and, and just verifying, just like letting them know who you are and why you're calling. We'll go over this in a second. They clear the schedule. We want to find out when that they should be home. And then the third part here is going over a tie down. That's it. There's three parts to a phone script and this is it. This is all you guys need to know to make sure that we have a solid phone script here. So with the introduction, it's just like, hey, Bob, and then let them let them respond. Yes. And it's be like, hey, Bob, um, this is Dan. I was just getting back to you about the form you have filled out online about the life insurance information. You put your date of birth down as 1-2-1953. That's you, right? Keep it really simple. And this is the only, whether you're dialing a mortgage lead, a final expense mailer, a Facebook final expense mailer, or a just basic internet lead, this is going to be the only thing that changes right here, right? About what you're calling about, right? So this would be for the life part, the, the form that you had filled out online about the life insurance information. If it was a mortgage protection, the form you received in the mail and sent back to our office. And then for a final expense, if it was like a Facebook final expense lead, um, form you had filled out online asking about the final expense programs here in Florida. That's it. This right here, this is how you differentiate all the different leads that we talked about. The rest of the script is the exact same. That's it. If you're calling an age lead, like if it's over a few months ago, hey, I was just getting back to you. I apologize. You've been really built up or backed up. It was about the form you had filled out online. I just, I insert that little clip there just to let them know that it was a little while ago because they might not remember it. And this part here is important. So I, as soon as I get through this, I want to ask a verifying question. I want them to say yes. I never want to ask how you doing. I don't know about you guys, but on Facebook, I have a bunch of people that are doing Bitcoin and Forex stuff and just random stuff like um, caricatures. They're reaching out to me. They're like, hey, Dan, how are you? I'm like, you don't know me. Like, why are you asking how I am? You, you don't even know who I am. This is weird, right? And it's just, it, it just it sounds weird, right? We don't know who they are. So just asking someone how they're doing is a weird thing to ask because we don't know them, right? So the other person's thinking, why is this person asking how am I doing when they don't know me? Um, but the second reason we don't want to ask questions like that is because it's open-ended. We want to ask questions that we know the answer to, or it should be a simple yes or no. It's like a binary question, right? We don't want to leave them with too many options to start interjecting us. So it, that's you, right? And I want to say, hey, my job is simple. I'm just the local manager. And I like to say local, letting them know I'm local to their area. Here in, um, here in Jacksonville or enter whatever city or county you're in, assign to your, assign to your case. They just send me out there for 10 to 15 minutes to see if we can help you out. This part is important right here to see if we can help you out. You don't wanna use stuff like, I just gotta drop off the information. 
Um, so I used to, I, I was getting a lot of no-shows and I moved down here to Florida and uh, my upline got on a Zoom. I'm like, hey, I'm not having good success. I'm getting a lot of no-shows. Can you please help me out on the Zoom dials we had? And she goes, yes, definitely. And I was saying, hey, I just got to go out there for 10, 15 minutes to drop the information off to you. And she was like, Dan, if someone said they had just had to drop information off to you, what are you expecting? Right? They're expect, uh, I'm expecting them just to give me a packet of information and like drop it on my mail, like on my front porch or the, in the mailbox. The urgency is not there. Also, when I get to the door and try walking in the house, it's, it's setting a weird expectation, right? But saying, I did, they just sent me out there for 10, 15 minutes to see if we can help you out is very important. It doesn't sound that salesy, right? It just sounds like we have to get out there and help them out. And it's also inferring that we will be chatting for a little bit. So it builds the urgency that they should be home. So if you guys are using stuff like um, just drop the information off to you, make sure you stop doing that immediately. Um, that should help out a good bit with your no-show rates. But here I'm letting them know I got to go over there to their house and I, I got to sit down with them to see if we can actually help them out. Two, clearing the schedule. This is very, very, very important, these next two parts. So I'd be like, um, hey, Bob, are you still working? retired or on disability. But I want to, the, the purpose of clearing the schedule is I want to find out when they should be home and if they have a spouse, when the spouse should be home. And then I just tell them I'm coming over. It's awkward for them to say no, I'm not coming home. And it also goes back to we're the doctor, they're the patient, right? So they're fitting into my schedule because I'm running 10, 15 appointments a day. They're not or I'm not fitting into their schedule. I'm gonna put them where I need them to be to make sure I'm having a really efficient day and can you know, fit in 10 to, or I said 10 to 15, but 10 to 12 appointments a day. Um, so I'll ask that question. And if they say working, got it. What time do you typically, we'll put this in caps. What time do you typically get home from work? And the word typically is also very, very important. Because if someone asks me, hey, Dan, what time do you get home from work? Well, some days it's two, some days it's six, some days it's nine, I don't know. But if you say, hey, Dan, what time do you typically get home from work? Nine, got it, I'm gonna swing by at 9.30. Right, you see how that's a little bit different there to kind of figure out their schedule. So the word typically is actually really important. And if they say we're tired or on, Disability. Got it. Do you have any doctor's appointments tomorrow? Right? And this is also another very important question to ask. You know, we are dealing with the senior market. And sometimes one trip to them at the doctor's at two o'clock in the afternoon is an all-day event. Right? So if we didn't ask this question, they go, no, we had doctor's appointments. Sorry, I can't make it. But if we proactively ask them, hey, do you got any doctor's appointments tomorrow? And they say, yes, I got one at two. God, well, guess what? If they're older, I'm gonna put them in the morning slot. I'm gonna say, God, sweet, I'm gonna head out at nine o'clock, get this back to you. Um, but before I suggest the time, um, I ask a very second important question. And Bob, I didn't see a significant other listed here. Um, sometimes if you're running mortgage leads or uh, any type of mailer, they will have if there is a spouse, but I still like to ask this question regardless. Um, are you single, married, widowed, or divorced? This question right here is super, super important so you don't get a one-legged appointment. Well, what a one-legged appointment is, is you get there, one, only one of them is actually home. And I mean, I'm not married at the moment, but I've heard if... He, one of the spouses gets a two, $300 a month policy and doesn't tell the other spouse about it, it's probably not gonna be good news. More times than not though, you're gonna get all the way through the appointment and then they're gonna be like, God, well, I gotta talk it over with the spouse, I'll get back to you. So we always wanna make sure that they're both going to be home for the appointment. Um, if they're single, then I just go back into question um, 2A and then I put in if they have a significant, significant other, you go back to question 2A. Actually, we'll just take this out. We don't need to go back to this. We just gotta go book an appointment. Um, so if we have a significant other, we gotta ask, we gotta ask the question 2A, are they 
still working, retired, or on disability, and we want to figure out what their schedule is. And the important, the, the word they here is also very important. You don't want to use him or she, right? It, it, it can, you know, it's a 21st century. If we just assume that they're married to a female or a male, like the opposite sex, we could be offending some people. We don't, we do not want to do that. Um, so this is what clearing the schedule is. So let's say that I found out, you know, oh, um, I, let's say for example, Bob is married. Bob is married. You marry. Bob working. Mary working. Both get home around 6.30, right? This is the scenario right here, right? So they're both working and they both typically get home around 6.30. So what I do right here, let me just see where I'm at in this, clearing the schedule. Um, look, here's where I book the appointment. And I just say, hey, got it. So Bob, Mary, or uh, Mr. Bob, you know, I do see about 10, 15 families every single day. I just wanna make sure we can get this out to you to see if we can help you out. I'm going to um, put you down between, so I would say I already have my six and my 6.30 booked, make me seem busy. Even if it's the first appointment of the day, make us seem busy. I was like, if we had one doctor that had openings all day long, we had another doctor that only had an appointment tomorrow at 1030. By God, I ain't missing that 1030 spot because I want to make sure that I get into the doctor, my legs broken, and I got to get this fixed. Whereas the doctor that's got availability all day long, you might be cutting off the wrong leg, right? So we want to make ourselves sound busy, make ourselves sound important. That's actually really, really important. So I'm going to put you down between seven to eight o'clock tomorrow to make sure that we can get this information back to you. And then I go directly into the tie down. So I'll ask Bob, 123 Main Street, what color is the house, right? So I go right into the tie down. So I, I tell them I'm coming over and we go right into the tie down, right? Because they're fitting into my calendar. Um, so if we can be a little bit interactive again, and we're gonna ask questions about the tie down. Um, if you guys could go put in the chat box any questions that you like to ask um, to make sure that we tie down the appointment, appointment um, please go ahead and put that in the chat box and we can go over this um, here just in a second. Where is my chat box? My chat box is not loading. All right. Uh, so um, once I see if I can get it to come up. One second. Oh, there we go. Oh, now it disappeared again. Sorry. Okay. Got it. So I'm seeing a few questions on here. Um, we got is where are the numbers? Any reason that you would not be able to be there? GPS. Any dogs, let me, any gates, dogs, right? And if you're living in like a, a state, I don't know about Arizona, but I know Florida's got a lot of gated communities. I always like to ask about gates here in Florida so I don't get there and then there's a gate. Where are the numbers? Park in driveway, street. Let me see, um, two. I find it on GPS. Any reason you won't be home then? Perfect. Okay. Um, one great, great responses, everyone. One question I really like to ask. Oops, I see confirmation code. This is very important. One question I really like to ask is Can I see the house from the street? This question is magical for whatever reason. Sorry, and going back to the importance of the tie down, right? That the reason that we're asking these questions isn't because we necessarily care about what color the house is, but I want to start getting them to visualize me coming to the house. The more they can visualize me coming over, right? I said the shorter kind, dude, big bushy eyebrows, being a Toyota RAV4, the more they can visualize that, the more likely they are to actually remember you coming over, the more likely they'll be when they get home. Confirmation code. 
Um, and what I do for this was actually really good. So Zach T, thanks for putting this on here. The confirmation code is very, very important. Um, and we're all saying, hey, Bob, uh, can you do me a favor real quick? Go grab a pen and paper. So again, I'm, just, I'm asking them to do something for me before I even get there. I'm showing that I'm in control of the appointment. And I say, hey, Bob, do you mind grabbing a pen and paper real quick so you can take down my information? And giving them your information, again, it just provides some calmness to them. I got it. So he's giving me his information before I even get there. So again, my name is Dan. A confirmation code for the appointment is CT21. It means nothing. It's my siblings' initials and my favorite number. And that's it. But I just want them to write something down. And again, the appointment is going to be between, oh, I think we said between seven to eight. But just give a little window. Um, so I am going to be coming from the other side of town. So again, th this, I really like this a lot too. Um, so there's two things I really like about this. I'll be there between seven and eight. I'm giving them a window. Because if I said, hey, I'm going to be there right at 730. If I show up at 745, I'm 15 minutes late. Right? And some people will actually get perturbed about that. But if I say, hey, I'm going to be there between seven and eight. In my head, I, I know that I should be there at 730. If I show up between seven and eight o'clock, they're thinking that I'm right on time. Okay, so expectations start on the phones. Um, and then I just say, hey, please give me a little uh, window um, uh, because, you know, I am coming from the other side of town and you know how traffic can be in Jacksonville um, from the other side of town. And even if I'm coming from five minutes down the road, I say I'm coming from the other side of town because I don't want to be there and they're going to be there. Um, so, Zach, I see. Um, you did ask, hey, are, are you pr you're pretty good about keeping your appointments, right? And then I will enter that right after I say, hey, I am coming from the other side of town. Um, you are pretty good at keeping your appointments, right? Right, because you, again, you, it's almost making them feel guilty if they're not gonna be home. Um, let me see if I missed anything else in here. Just give me a second. So, um, Yep, so Daniel, I saw your comment as well, and that's that's very similar to what I it looks like Zach posted in the, the chat as well. So I think that addressed that. Um, do, do numbers, gates, color of the house, why we'll that in there. So I would recommend not using all of these. Do not use all of these. Pick like one, two of them, plus a confirmation code. Um, so you definitely you always want to use a confirmation code. That is a non-negotiable. Um, but find one or two of these that you like. So I run a lot of mortgage protection. So I always like to ask, hey, I can find this on GPS, right? Because sometimes with new mortgage protection, it's a brand new house and it doesn't yet show up on GPS. So I wanna make sure when I'm going there that I can see it on GPS. Um, I'll ask that and since I am down in Florida as well, I'll say any gates I gotta worry about because I wanna know when I'm getting to their complex, whether it's a housing community or apartment complex, and this is, if you're in Florida, I would ask this one definitely. I don't want to get there and then there's a gate. That really stinks. So I do GPS. This is what I do. Um, any gates. And can I see the house from the street? Those are the ones I ask. It really doesn't matter. You just want to visualize them coming over. And then sometimes I'll just put a little humor on there um, to, to really tie it down. And the humor is just like, hey, Bob, just so you know, it's me. I'll be the short Italian guy with the big bushy eyebrows pulling up between seven and eight o'clock for tomorrow. Um, so when you see that pull up, you know you got the right person. Sound good? Yep, got it. I'll see you tomorrow. Um, so just, you know, picking fun of myself a little bit. If you're not a funny person, do not try to be funny. Just say, hey, no, this is Dan. I'll be in the Toyota RAV4. It's a gray SUV. When you see this pull up, you know you got the right person. And Bob, I'm looking forward to helping you out tomorrow. So great, great job y'all on uh, giving some stuff there. Um, one thing too about the tie down, um, or sorry, no, one thing about the script in general. I don't know if you guys noticed, um, I know we're doing this a little bit, not just how my traditional script would go. I say the client's name a lot. Everyone's name is typically their favorite word, right? So using their first name, just, it gives some calmness to them. So I use it a lot throughout the appointment just to, to give themselves, to give, to build some trust with them. Um, so do make sure you are doing that a decent bit. So that goes over that. The next thing that we're going to go over is 
phone objections, how to get really good at handling phone objections. And that's where we use the AAA. Actually, before we go down there, if you guys could, please put in the chat box some common objections that you guys get, um, because we're probably gonna figure out that a lot of us get the same objections. So as long as we can get good at overcoming some simple objections, we're gonna do okay. So please go ahead and drop that in the trap chat box. Busy, already taken care of. Didn't fill out. Not interested. Appreciate it. Keep them coming, y'all. I appreciate it. No. No. Already taken care of. Yeah. Too expensive. Um, what was another one? Um, Yep, great one, Portia. I'm gonna put another one on here too, um, the, the out of town one. Um, that is tough, but I just wanna put it in there because I know a bunch of y'all do get it as well. All right, so, okay, now we got a common list of objections. And you guys, you guys, some of y'all put the same objection on there, right? So the objections are super, super similar. But then they're all gonna be about the same. This is literally anyone like this is pretty much all the objections that we're going to get. So what we're going to use, it's called the, the AAA method. So the AAA method of handling objections. Um, so a bunch of y'all probably know this from watching the training, so good stuff. A, B, So this is how you overcome a lot of objections. So this is where Matt Smith training on phone objections comes in key. He's a wizard at overcoming phone objections. He would literally run one day a week and he wrote over $400,000 running one day a week just because he's really, really freaking good at the phone and overcoming objections. Um, so I would definitely go ahead and research Matt Smith phone objections. Great trainings here. Um, but so whenever we're overcoming an objection, right, if there's ever a period of time where there's like a split second and we don't say anything, they win, right? They hang up the phone and done. And so by saying something like, okay, perfect. That's just the reason I'm calling. Saying this simple line in here, even if you're brand new, but you say this right here, it gets rid of that split second of, we don't know what to say here, All right? So it shows that you're in control. And also when you agree with someone, Right? If someone says that we got it taken care of, can't you just mail it and you agree with them, they're expecting you to butt heads. They're expecting confrontation. But as soon as we agree with them, it lowers the defenses down a little bit. And then they're like, okay, I'm going to listen now. Why do you say perfect? Why, why is Dan agreeing with me? So acknowledge. I'm just the local. And this, this part changes a little bit based on the objection that you're getting. All right, but that it's, it could be pretty simple like that. And then asking a question, this part is super, super important. Asking a question immediately retakes control of the conversation. We're still over at 123 Main Street, right? Or, Bob, you still working, retired, or on disability? And you go right back into your phone script. So this is how you overcome all the objections here, right? So busy, can you call me back? Hey, perfect, that's just the reason I'm calling. I just gotta get this information out to you. What time are you typically home from work? Four, got, hey, I already got my four, my 4.30 book. I'm gonna put you down for five just to make sure we can get this out to you, see if we can help you out. And uh, Mary, can you grab a pen and paper real quick so you can get it to me or so you can take down my information? Right, you gotta think about it too. If we're calling them and they're wicked busy, like if it's a doctor in the middle of surgery, he ain't gonna be picking up the phone. But someone picked up the phone. If they were that, that busy, they would not have picked up the phone. They're just trying to get you off. Boom, done. Already got it taken care of. Hey, perfect. That's just the reason I'm calling. I'm just the local manager. They just sent out there to go over everything with you. You're still over at the one, two, three main street, right? Yep. Didn't fill it out. Not interested. Hey, you know, that's just the reason I'm calling. It was a while back. They just got, they just have to send me out there to see if we can help you out with this information. You're still over at the one, two, three main street, right? No one in the house. Or wait. Oh, not letting anyone in the house. That's what that one is. 
hey, perfect. You know, they've given us special permission. We just have to, we can actually do everything face to face, or we can do everything outside to make sure we keep our social distancing. You're still over at the one, two, three Main Street, right? It's too expensive. Hey, perfect. That's just the reason I'm calling. I'm a broker. I work with all the carriers here in Florida. They just sent me out there to find something that makes sense for us. You're still over at the one, two, three Main Street, right? Can you email it? Send it in the mail. Mike P uses a beautiful one with this. He goes, hey, I, perfect. I wish I could, but unfortunately I am the information and I don't fit in the mailbox. You're still over at the one, two, three Main Street, right? When you go right back into the question and that's pretty much it. The out of town one, this one actually, this one is really tough. This is where you actually just have to mark the people that are out of town um, on your calendar. Make sure you hold on to these leads um, and call them back the next week when they're in town. There's not really too much you can actually do with this one. Um, but that's how you overcome objections, the triple A method. So if you guys are ever overcoming objections, if you find yourself rationalizing why you have to do what you do, and you find yourself talking a lot, they win, right? The phones is like a game. The, the goal of the phones, and I should have said this at the beginning, is just to set an appointment. That's it. It's just to get in the home and tie it down to make sure that they are going to be home. We go over everything actually when we're in the house itself. So you just use the AAA method, just get the appointment set. And for anyone that's been doing this a little while, the beauty about being a broker is we have a lot of different companies to go through. A lot of the senior market is getting bombarded with mail. They have graded policy that they didn't know they had. They're working with other companies that only have one product. So if, you, if they don't fit the A product, they're either not getting coverage at all or they're going into guaranteed issue policy. So when we get in the door, we're typically able to help out a lot of folks. That's where some of my biggest premiums are sold because the client sees a lot of value in protecting them. Sometimes the client will also have an increasing term policy that they're unaware of, where every five years or so that their policies jack up in price. And by the time they're 70, they're gonna be paying 500 bucks a month. But if we get out there and we can show them the value of something that we have with level premiums, we're able to provide a lot of value to them, right? There's a lot of people here that just genuinely need our help and they buy insurance many times in a year or not within a year, but within their lifetime. Like I actually had a, um, you know, a fellow here in Jacksonville. I sold a, a family, I helped them out. I guess I left, I guess I didn't ask the right questions. He went back there last week and wrote them more coverage. Right. Sometimes they want more coverage too. So we just got to actually get into the house. So the last thing we're going to touch on here is kind of a quote. And this is the most important thing about dial day. You want to judge your activity, not your results, right? We want to just put in the work, right? If we put in the work, the numbers are going to come. And we're going to go, we're going to have appointments that we can go on. Um, so what do I mean by this? All right, so we got, let's say we're just trying to replace our nine to five, right? And if we're trying, if we're trying to get out of our nine to five, we probably got to work a little bit harder to get out of it, right? Because now we're our own boss. So let's say we're working nine hours a day. Most people do not pick up the phone. It just is what it is for whatever reason, right? So on average, when I would ask this question, when you do it more live in person, I'll say, hey, Zach, you know, if you're making a phone call, assuming it goes to voicemail, how long does that take? And Zach would typically say 20, 30 seconds. Like, hey, I'm gonna do you a favor. Let's say it takes one minute per phone call. Right? And we call people three times in a row to set ourselves apart from a telemarketer. We had another new agent over in Louisiana. She called everyone once and she's like, damn, no one's picking up. She called, started calling everyone three times, but man, people pick up the phone on the second and third time. It's because you're setting yourself apart from a telemarketer. But let's say we got nine hours in a day that we're working, but right? it takes one minute to make one phone call. So we should be able to make 60 calls per hour. If we're dialing for nine hours in a day, that's 550 phone calls. Top producers are actually, we had a training with Sam Brooke the other day. She makes 75 phone calls an hour. There's a guy over here that works out of the Jacksonville office with me. He makes a hundred phone calls an hour with his finger. Right, so it's top producers, 75 to 100 calls per day. And so when I talk to new agents and they're like, hey, I'm like, hey, how did your day go? And they're like, you know, it didn't go too well. My like, God, how many phone calls did you make? 150. My like, God, so you worked for two to three hours. What you do with the rest of the day? Right. And I'm not saying that to be rude. I'm saying to be real. Right? Are we taking all day? Are we dialing all day? Or are we taking all day to dial? Right? And we want to just maximize the amount of time that we have. 
And I think I, I talked to a few of y'all about this. Is I'm actually, I'm at, at heart, I'm lazy. I am super lazy. I do not like dialing the phones. If you like dialing the phones, you're probably a little bit crazy. If I offended someone, I'm sorry, but you gotta be a little crazy if you really like dialing the phones. It's just a necessary evil. So how I think of it is, hey, how many phone calls can I make in an hour so I can be done as fast as possible? So now I've been doing this for about a year and a half. So between 7.30 in the morning when we start dialing to noon, 7.30 to 12, I already made 270 phone calls, right? Because I'm doing 60 phone calls an hour times four and a half hours, 270 calls by noon, right? So now, you know, whether I have five, six, 15 appointments on the book, sometimes you do 270 dials in that, like, that morning range. The mornings are a great time to dial when people are home, typically before work. So you're maximizing that. You can get 12, 15 appointments done by noon. And then you're just maximizing the time. Um, so you want to judge your activity, not your results. Um, and then just on the dial tracker real quick, it's kind of going off this. You want to keep track of the dial tracker and define, you can go to the FFL360.com website. You click on the phone scripts and there will be a dial tracker that you want to keep track of. And every time you click the send button, you either mark a zero, a check, or an X. Every time you click the send. On the left-hand side of your dial tracker, right, you'll see that the numbers 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Put what time it is, like what time you started. So 7.30, write that out on your dial tracker. Right? And this is going to help you judge the pace of your dialing. So when 8.30 comes around, you can actually see how many phone calls you made because you write 8.30 on the dial tracker. And this is how you can see, do I have a pace problem? Right? If we actually have a solid pace and we're making a lot of phone calls, then we need help with the phone script. But if we're actually just not putting in the work, it's harder to make tweaks when we're not working anyway. Um, and then on the back of the dial track, what I did when I was a brand new agent, um, I kept track of all my objections. So when noon comes around, I already made my 270 calls. I call my upline or some top producer that's booking a lot of appointments. I'm like, hey, Easton, um, this is what my day is looking like so far. I made 300 calls. These were the objections I got. How would you handle those? Right? So that way you could actually reach out with stats to someone and I kind of see what they would do in that scenario. But y'all, that's all I got for you guys. I will, I'm gonna stop recording here in a second and open it up for a Q&A question. Um, this will be recorded. I'll send it out on the YouTube page and also I'll post it in our Slack group. But I hope this helps you guys, you know, book some more appointments to get to that 30 appointments a week. It's really not that deep. If you just put in the activity, the results are gonna come. But again, we went through a bunch of stuff today. So if you guys did take, take some notes, we went over preparation, the tonality and speed of how we're actually talking. We went through the actual script itself. Um, and we went through any tie downs, like tie down questions, objections to get on the phone. That's when you use the AAA method. And also just about what we should be doing on dial day. And I'll just add this here because I'm here. Call three times in a row. So you know, I hope that helps. Um, if you guys have any, or let's get back on the phones. Let's go implement some of this stuff to book a lot of appointments for the weekend. This is the first week of August. Um, so let's enter August with a bang. Keep on a record momentum. We're going to be crushing a million dollars a month here in no time. Um, but I appreciate all you guys, and uh, let's go help some families. Let's do, uh...